Hi everyone. So today we're going to learn how to write quadratic functions uh, from a table and a graph using the calculator to help us with that. So you can see right here, um, if we're given a table of any kind, we put it in lists and spreadsheets. And we have done that for a long time in algebra class. We did it for linear functions, we did it for exponential functions, and now we're doing the same for quadratic functions. So all of these steps here that you're seeing, you've done before. The only new part, really, is the part that says we need to use a quadratic regression instead of linear or exponential. And then down here at the bottom, once it gives you the A, the B, and the C, where to plug those in at, okay? Because that would be new for us, okay? So as an example, you could see the standard form right there, AX squared plus BX plus C. Once you have your A, B, and C, you replace them with those numbers. So for instance, the A that is 2 would go in front of the X squared, okay? If the B is negative 4, it goes in front of the X, and the C value is your constant. So we end up having a full standard form equation from that. Okay, so keep in mind when we do use this regression, it will only give us standard form. It will not give us vertex form. Okay, so let's look at an example. We have a table here, okay, and if we want a equation of best fit for this, Keep in mind that on the star test, it will almost always tell you what kind of function it is that's being modeled. So we can see, written very clearly, the data can be modeled by a quadratic function. So it will tell you linear, quadratic, or exponential on the star test. That makes it so easy for us when we're doing this. So let's go ahead and type our data into the calculator. If you haven't already typed your data into lists and spreadsheets in your Inspire calculator, please pause the video and do that now. Always double check to make sure that you have all of it typed in correctly, especially with decimals. We might accidentally flip two numbers and type them in backwards. So keep that in mind, double check all of your values. Also note that this data goes along really well with the, um, scenario that they gave us. This is a person diving into a pool. So you can see here at time one second, he is 2.85 feet below the water. Negative means below, right? And you can see he's getting deeper and deeper, and then he starts coming back up to the surface. You can see here he's barely below the water um, and about to resurface after he's dived into the pool. Now we're going to do our regression. Make sure your cursor or highlighted box is below not up here in the gray okay let's follow our steps menu <clears throat> four for statistics one for stat calculations and we are doing a quadratic regression which is number six type x for x list and y for y list and hit enter twice now it's given us our a b and c that we can write our equation with all right, I've written down my A, B, and C. <clears throat> Please note that C is actually equal to zero or very, very close to zero if we're rounding. Because when you look here, first of all, 0 0.26 has been rounded. If you look at the bottom, the very bottom here, you actually see it's 0 0.259 repeating, which would round up to 0 0.26. And same thing here, it looks like this one's pretty exact. But if you look at this one, it has an E here in the center. That means this is scientific notation for negative 4 times 10 to the negative 13th power, which really means 0.00000000000004. So it's really, really, really close to 0. So we are going to round it to 0. Okay? So if you ever see that E, that means it's in scientific notation and is really close to 0. So now we can write our equation now that we have A, B, and C. <clears throat> y equals the a goes first just like alphabetical order after the a is the x squared minus because it's a negative the b value is negative negative 3.11 x goes after the b and normally we'd put the c value on the end but do we really need to put plus zero it's like you're adding nothing so i would not even include it so this would be our final answer Okay, so you should have an x squared, an x, and a constant as your final answer. 
Now let's look at the graph. We can do the same thing for a graph. Our table isn't made yet though. So we can go ahead and write points on the table. Will they always be given to you like it was this time? No, but you can find those points and put them in the table yourself. So my first point is negative two, zero, four, six, and six, zero. Notice two of them are our roots, the x-intercepts right here. And then one of them is a random point. So let's go ahead and type those into our calculator. All right, so here we have our data typed in. For this time, it was really easy because we didn't have any decimals and they were whole number points. Make sure every x, like negative two, is paired up with the correct y zero. That is one point. Four six was a point and six zero was a point on the graph. Now we're gonna hit the same buttons, menu, four, one, and then six for quadratic functions. We type in X and then Y, hit enter twice. And identify your A, B, and C. Write them down and then write your function. You can see that I have the A, B, and C written down and I have already plugged them into the function. So this is the correct answer. However, keep in mind that you could see negative 0.5 as negative 1 half instead. Remember, 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half. So you could see the fraction or the decimal. Both of these are correct answers. Keep in mind the star test is multiple choice, so you could see either. You need to know that they mean the same thing. Okay. If you have any questions about how to use your calculator to do quadratic regressions, please raise your hand and let your teacher know, okay? Have a good day, guys.